Okay, today we're going to practice with our robot C. So right here I have open already <clears throat> my VEX Robotics. Uh, this is the virtual, so we want to make sure that we've chosen uh, virtual ahead of time when we opened it. And um, you can tell that you have open robot virtual worlds uh, because it has here the icon at the bottom you can just see it RVW which stands for robot virtual worlds so let's do this some setup here step one we're gonna go first to the window tab and in the window tab we want to select the virtual world which we'd like to use and we're gonna start with the Palm Island training ground all of these are options, but for starting, I think it's best to start with the training ground. Next, click on the Robot tab and travel down to Platform Type. Make sure that you've selected VEX 2.0 Cortex and the Natural Language PLTW option. It should be a check and a dot. Okay, let's create a uh, simple set of commands to give to the robot. We're going to create a brand new program so I need to click on the new file option. What I have now is the generic format or template for us to create a piece of code. It will have the task main up across the top with two parentheses open and closed I then have a what we call a curly brace and I'm going to zoom in on that and you can see how they are curly. Now the, this beginning and this end brace contain all of the code so imagine this as the cover of the book and this is the back of the book. All the pages of the code must live in between here so don't ever drag and drop anything behind this or in front of that. Now I'm going to add a bunch of spaces here. I clicked right there on line 5 and I'm going to hit enter a few times to give myself some space. That way when I drag and drop my commands I don't have to worry too much about putting them in the wrong spot. I'm going to go over here and out of all these commands we're only really going to deal with natural language today. So open up the plus next to natural language and we're going to go down to robot motion and open up that one as well. All right, these are our options for robot motion. The ones we're interested in are the backward and forward, and we're going to do a lot of point turning and swing turning potentially. But really, what I'm interested in is the forward and backwards today and the turn. So let's go ahead and drag one of these over and put it between the two curly braces. Drag that over and place it like so. Notice there's a space between the curly brace and the forward command. You can have as many spaces as you want in between commands and the robot will read through those as if they're not there. It's nice to have spaces so it doesn't look so crowded to the human eye. So we're told to go forward and then I have uh, two parentheses and notice inside the parentheses I have the word speed. And that is in standard text without any color. We need to change that to a number. The best way to do that is bring your cursor inside the parentheses and double click. I like to double click instead of click and drag because look I accidentally grabbed one of these parentheses here and that can be a problem if I delete it. So double click. Maximum speed is 127. I'm going to use half of that speed at 63. Notice that I also have a semicolon. That is sort of like a period at the end of a sentence. I'm going to tell the robot to go forward at a speed of 63 and this semicolon tells me that I'm done talking about that and tells the computer it's okay to go to the next line. Remember, the computer will read the code like you read a book, top to bottom, left to right. So add the code in the correct order that it happens. Call that chronological. Now, great, I'm going to go forward at a speed of 63 but the computer needs to know for how many seconds it should travel at a speed of 63. So what I need to do is use the wait command for that. Open the plus next to wait and drag wait out. Notice there's two options there. 
One is milliseconds and one is seconds. You can use milliseconds, it's just that uh, there are 1,000 milliseconds in a second, so you'll have to use uh, the appropriate number. So if you wanted three seconds and you use the millisecond command, you'd have to type 3,000. If you use just the wait in time, you could just type in three. Notice I just have the wait in time. Again, I'm going to double click inside of here. You usually don't want to have too many, uh, too long of a, of a wait time. In my case, since I know what I'm getting into, I'm going to just use a, about uh, two seconds. Okay, great. I actually have a piece of code here. The robot will try to do this. It'll try to go forward at a speed of 63 for two seconds. When it gets down here where there's nothing, it just, it'll just sit here and wait. It has no idea what's next, so it just waits, which means it does nothing. Well, we're not done yet. We need to tell the software, Robot C, what kind of robot we're sending this code to. In order to do that, we need to go up to Motors and Sensors Setup. It's this big button here. It can also be accessed by dropping down the Robot tab and going to Motors and Sensors Setup. Now, if you'll notice right now, I have motors, 10 ports that are empty, analog sensors, 8 ports that are empty, and digital sensors, 12 that are empty. All of these are areas in the brain of the actual robots that can be plugged in. We're not going to use this, we're not going to create this by hand yet. It's a little advanced. We're going to go to the standard models tab, and in, under select configuration, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of different robots, different types that can be used at different times. We are going to start with a very simple thing, which is the GTT testbed. Yes, it doesn't look like a fancy robot, but all the wires are where we want them. So we're going to use this to start. So once you select that, I need you also to open the Motors tab, and you'll notice that are now motors input inputted. We want to take this right motor and follow down the line and reverse it. And if we don't do that, the robot spins in one spot because of the way in which the motor is mounted. I'm going to click Apply. If you don't click Apply, it won't happen, and click OK. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see all this. So if you notice everything at the top, this is sort of the nervous system of the robot, telling me where everything is plugged in or where it thinks it's plugged in. And then under Task Main is the actual code itself. Now our job is to go ahead and download this to the virtual robot in the Palm Island activity. So I'll click Download a Robot. First thing it's asking me to do is please save it. We always need to save new stuff. So I'm going to change the name from Source File to the name Palm. And because it's Palm Island, and I'm also going to click on Desktop because I'd like to save it right on the desktop where it's easy to see. And I'll go ahead and click Save. I already have another one there from demonstrating this earlier. You probably won't get this. I'm just going to say yes to this and the Palm Island activity should come up, the training grounds. Click play and skip that guy. I think he's kind of annoying and I'm going to also close this particular set of instructions by clicking this brown X. I'm doing that because I have a different set of instructions for you. Now let's take a look at this interface. I have, uh, it tells me how many objects I've collected I have the play button, the reset button, the main menu button, the show button, it shows me a laser. I have adding and subtracting joysticks. I have a gripper, which I don't, but I have a button for it. I have the help option. I have the map, it shows me above view map. I have the standard camera, which follows. I have an above view camera. You can see my little bot over here. I also have a option for the third camera which allows me to click and drag and look at all the different cool stuff that's around me okay all right let's go back to the standard camera and if I move this out of the way a little bit when I click play it will play this code right here I should go forward at a speed of 63 for two seconds let's try it okay well my goal is to get to here so I have two choices to make myself go farther. I'm going to click back onto the coding screen. And don't worry, the Palm Island is still there. It just is kind of behind everything. So I'm going to click here. Now what I want to do is I want to increase the time to maybe 2.5. 
click 2.5 and I've actually changed the code. The problem is it hasn't changed it in the brain of the robot yet. When I download the robot it will take this code, it will put it in this brain. The problem is I need to reset. That's where this button comes in. So every change you make here must be downloaded and then you must reset. When I click play it'll start at the beginning of the code and try it again. This time I should get a little farther. Well, not all the way. Let's change the speed this time. I'm going to give it a speed of 70. Let's see how much farther that gets me. So I'm gonna, I'll actually travel faster, so I should get there. I should go farther. Again, download every change, reset to start the beginning, and then hit play. Now at a speed of 70, oh, almost. Let's just increase this a little bit more. Let's go 73. and download that. Reset. Play. You're going to do a lot of resetting and whatnot. Alright, we've turned. Or we've made it to that spot. Now we're going to add a turn. And I'm going to go ahead and add a turn underneath this. Remember, it's going to read it from top to bottom. So let's open natural language again and open up robot motion. Let's grab a point turn. I'm going to put a space between these so I know it's a different, even though it wouldn't matter to the robot, I'm going to put a space, and I'm also going to add my weight. You must have a weight for every motion. Okay, point turn, direction, either left or right, I'm going to type in left. Speed, maximum is 127, let's go with speed is 63, and wait time, I'm going to have it only turn for one second. So now what it should do is you go forward at a speed of 73 for 2.5. It should point turn to the left at a speed of 63 for one second. I'm actually going to increase this to 0.8 because I noticed I wasn't going far enough. So sometimes I'll have to change that. Let's download this. Let's reset. And let's play. Whoa! I went too far. So let's change this. Let's reduce my speed. I went probably twice as far as I needed to. I'm going to change that to 33. Download that. And reset. And play. Ah, that's not so bad. Um, I probably need to increase this. So I'm going to make it wait for 1.2 seconds. And now let's add another forward. Natural language. Robot motion. Forward. And another wait. You're going to continue this type of thing all the way. You can use any speed you want up to 127. I'm going to have to go four seconds. I want to download this now. Now I'm excited to go forward and wait. Point turn and wait and forward and wait. Let's see what happens. Download. Reset. Play. Oops. Well, obviously I've got to change some things, right? So let's go back, reset, go to our code. Um, I needed to turn more, right? So let's change this to a two point, one point, maybe five. Let's see if that's better. Because you could see it was the turn that needed to be changed. Okay, I already reset it, double check, and hit play. Well, that was pretty good. So you could see what I'd do next is I would take another point turn and wait and drop it under the forward. Don't be afraid of adding some more spaces so you don't ever put anything on the wrong side of these curly braces. So basically by taking these chunks of code and overlapping them one after the other, you should be able to go forward and turn and forward and turn. Okay, try it on your own.